Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Who Are You podcast. I'm your host, Connor Overbay, every single week coming out of Jacksonville, Florida. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome. We're always happy to have a new listener, a new watcher, or pretty much a mix of anything you guys can find us on. Um, if you want to give us a follow, see some behind-the-scenes content, or just more of the podcast, you guys can give us a follow. It's going to be at Who Are You Pod for everything from Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, uh, even YouTube now. So make sure you guys give us a follow on there. Also, if you guys know anybody who has a story that needs to be told, a business owner, an entrepreneur, an artist, someone you think would be a good fit for the podcast, please uh, shoot me an email or hit me up on any of the social media, and maybe we'll have you guys on a future episode. And the email is going to be whoareyoupod at yahoo.com. But today, I'm sure you guys see, I'm sitting down with three guests today. We're starting to expand how many people we have on the podcast nowadays. So today, I'm sitting down with the founders of the Wind Down Wednesday, a big group of people who are doing all kinds of amazing things here in Jacksonville. So we're just going to start by going down the line if you want to go mr dr dom if you want to tell everybody your social media all that good stuff let them know where they can find you and we'll start going down the line most definitely um everybody dr dom my name is dominique um you can find my social media instagram is dr dom underscore oh four uh clothing brand old soul llc you know on the shirt on the hat and obviously wind down wednesday jacks Hello, my name is Kalia Grace. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at Wiz Kalia. Um, by day, I'm a marriage and family therapist at More Life Wellness LLC. Um, at, but I am officially the first lady of Wind Down Wednesday. Hey. Jacks. <laughs> what about you, Robbie? Uh, my name is Robbie. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, by day, I I run an insurance business. Uh, I'm an insurance agent and then Wind Out Wednesday. So I'm an artist, a lyricist, and a poet in the city as well. Love to hear it, y'all. And like I said, welcome to the podcast. I've been talking to you guys a little bit back and forth, trying to get everything, you know, squared away. I know you guys all live busy lives and also got these events that you guys are throwing. And like I said, thank you guys for coming to the podcast. I was really looking forward to this interview. I love seeing people who are doing positive things in, in our city and trying to promote local artists, local businesses and everything. So welcome to the podcast, y'all. It's a blessing to be, here. Welcome to be here. Yeah, no problem. So I'm going to kind of give a little bit of backstory how me and you guys met. So <clears throat> I met you guys over at the uh, Safe House. And shout out to Safe House. Unfortunately, it looks like they're not going to be around much more or much longer. But we know they're going to come back stronger in future events Absolutely. and everything. Absolutely. So yeah. shout out to Joe. Joe. I'll say Joe That's does Joe. all kinds of great stuff and was promoting local people here in Jacksonville as well. That's our guy. He, yep. So he's just going to take a little moment to kind of uh, get back together and then he'll come back even stronger. So shout yeah. out to Safe House, by the way. Mm-hmm. So I met you guys at a Safe House event. It was when John Hawkins was doing his art show there. And it was pretty It was pretty cool. I, was, I hadn't had a chance to meet Robbie yet, but I saw you involved on all the social media and everything as well and it was really cool like we all yeah. kind of sat down we're just shooting the shooting the breeze i was just kind of walking around handing out stickers and you guys sat down and talked to me for a minute you know it was really interesting sure. to hear and learn y'all's story and i uh, mean you were talking mm-hmm. about like the mental health space of things yes. i thought that was a really interesting conversation and no, that's a big um <clears throat> He, a big thing that we talk about on the podcast here as well as like for me like growing up was like hardcore depression suicidal thoughts all that kind of stuff and I'm really big on men talking about what they've kind of gone mm-hmm. through in their life and you know it's not something that you just have to lean on but at least get it out there and you know yeah, like exactly. why I am here where I am today and what kind of person I am so it was a really interesting conversation and we were talking about you as well what uh what's your job right so You're, I'm, a, I'm a physical therapist that's what I thought it was yeah, I didn't yeah, want to yeah. say I was wrong and everything but you that's got, awesome you and you you own your own business my man well, yeah, so basically what I do is, like, you know, I, I learned the skills, and then I was able to broker a deal with a company out of Clearwater, and they're a private insurance company. So I like I said, hey, I want to want to work these hours, and then if I work these hours, I can make these number of sales for me. Okay, okay. So basically I was able to work out my own commission structure, and I was able to, like, work out a salary. So, like, I have a salary and an uncapped commission structure, which is rare in my industry. Yep. It's usually contract, and then basically it's only commission-based. Mm-hmm. And so, like, most people don't do that because of that, but most people don't know that you can actually, if you have the skill set and the licensing— you can broker your own deal with companies. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. That boy's smart right there. Yes, sir. And you got the uncapped commission. That's kind of right. like, I was telling you guys, I got a new job. I'm not going to say where, but uh, uh-huh. you know, I got to say what, uh, where I work, man. I got, n- find him. got a nice little <laughs> nice little salary and everything. And then I got uncapped commission as well, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got to make that money. Make sure, you know, trying to get a house here sooner or later. Unfortunately, Facts. this economy is not 
not making it work that well. Not at all. <laughs> me and Don were talking about that, you know, a year ago. So yeah, man, it's just one of those things. You know, Florida, especially Jacksonville. Now, this is the place where everybody's moving to. You know, and this yeah. is going to be the new Orlando, new Miami, Tampa, and everything. Yeah. It's it's crazy to see how big Jacksonville's really grown to it where is. it is today. Absolutely. But so, how did you guys all come together? Have y'all always been friends? Obviously, you guys are husband and wife, so I know you guys have been with each other for a while. But how did you guys kind of all get in the mix together? I really love this story because every time we tell it, it's like it's just like it lays the foundation of how it all happens and how things are so like cool, right? So me and Dom, uh, we know each other from FAMU, so Tallahassee. Oh, nice. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we and know each other then. And I was just a fan. You know, I would see him perform and, <laughs> and I was like, man, bro, you dope. Like two, three times, I would come up to Matt's performances and just give him flowers. You know what I mean? hey. That's really what it was. And, I, and back then, I was in a group with, a, with my, my ex at the time mm-hmm. uh, um, in a group called Channel Pyro and our brand was just like this Afrocentric love story. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that was the name of the album. It was, it was called Afro Pyro, a love story. And we would promote this album in different barbershops, different venues and um Dom saw that he was like yo man like I'm he like he was like I was hearing it I'm like bro this was crazy like you know it was sure. crazy yeah. for, the time, for the time being in that time in that time and space and tally right. nobody was doing that type of stuff so gotcha. for sure mm-hmm. for sure we talked for like 30 minutes like we would yeah. have like in depth conversations like each time you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying yeah and then I saw him at Warris yep and I was like I was like, I want Spider Man. Yeah, he, he, he recognized me. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, so yeah, it was, it was organic. And um, basically, he was like, and I was telling him, I'm saying, man, I feel like we can do this at the Warriors on a higher scale. Yeah, or whatever. And I was like, follow me. What walk with me? You know what I'm saying? We walked right down the back of bar that night, and he showed me back of bar, and I was like, hey, yo. I've always I've always had my eyes on this venue and yeah. you, know, that, you know Dom and he was the one Dom was the one that able to plug me in with Will and that's how it, it, everything began we, like it found like we were, me Dom and Will literally like found it this concept together and then it grew we added Kalia we added Larry into it and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and it grew to the five of us um, but it started basically you know long ago from Dom me me fam and me me and me relinking with Dom back here in Jacksonville yeah having the idea and then honestly like sticking on it and pushing it and making it to what it is today nice right. you know and like the heart of it was so much uh trying to help out because yes. so me and will were homies I used to live in Murray Hill and um I, that was my coffee shop so we we became really good friends mm-hmm. and at the time you know vagabond coffee shop is shut down now but yeah. At the time, his business was struggling, and I knew that. So he would confide in me, and I was like, hey, man, if there was some way I can help you, I would love to, right? So we're at the Walrus, and Robbie is talking to me about, about him because Robbie, Robbie came up with the idea for the event. This was something that came out of his head. Um, it was similar to something that we both experienced in Tallahassee, so we kind of had a – so, oh, he, when he was telling me the idea, I was like, oh, yeah, like this sounds like this, and mm-hmm. we were mm-hmm. bouncing ideas around, and – as he was looking for a space, I was like, man, I, I got the perfect space because I knew Will would be down for it, you know, just because of the guy that he is. And mm-hmm. I knew that it could be something that could potentially help his help business. Him out. You know what I mean? So it, so it just all became a perfect storm. And when we told Will, Will was like, hell yeah. Nice. You know what I mean? And I don't think at the time he knew how big it was going to be. He was just like willing to try whatever. Right. Like, he, he was, was just down for whatever. Down for it, hey, you know? man. Sometimes you got to throw something at the wall and see I what don't sticks. Think we knew how big it was going to exactly. be. Exactly. No, we didn't. We really didn't. I mean, everything I've seen, y'all, it looks huge. And like, I haven't had a chance to make it out to one yet, but I do want to come out to one soon and go check out the event and everything because I just love seeing all the different kinds of vendors you guys have there, musical artists, like performances and everything. It's it's really awesome to see it. What's up? Speaking of vendors, time places. Oh. <laughs> I, Those are time and places? Yeah. Oh. I oh, know. I like those. I know who Time and Place is. He's I, been, I, I he's been on here before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know those Shout are Time and Placers. Oh, those, those are hard. Yes, Take sir. Shout out to Time and Place, man. Sure. I say I had him on here. Funny enough, so you know he's kind of like a little mysterious, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So whenever I had him do the interview here, he yeah, reached. He, he no, no, no. He didn't do the mask with me. That was on. Um, that was on Greybeard's podcast. Okay, 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 okay. So on mine, he was like, he just pixelated my face out. So yeah. like we did the whole interview, and then I, like I had him like kind of like, go incognito. So I, Every video I made, you wouldn't be able to see his face and everything. That's crazy. But That's hilarious. Shout, That's really hilarious. Shout out to Brett, man. Brett's yeah. cool yeah. as hell. Yeah. Like he did. I, I think he had just moved to Jacksonville or just been here for a little bit. But the growth of time and place has been crazy as, yeah. as yeah. well. His sure. branding is wild. Yeah, man, I love to see his branding. Man, he is. But he's gotten involved with like John. Like we were all talking about John Hawkins. They've all worked together. Like uh, one thing he did that was pretty cool was uh, the boxes. They, yeah. He would have the artists do like different Ooh. kinds of like yeah. limited edition Ooh. boxes and everything. And it's it's cool to see, man. I like when he like hit the. 
time places around the city and yeah. black people look for them. That was cool. I, oh yeah, man. I see him post stuff up. I'm like, I know where that's at. Yeah, no, I was just yeah, like, yeah, damn, yeah. I'm at work. I can't go nowhere right now. <laughs> I was like, exactly. I, I could, I'd go scoop that up right now. But no, that's that's cool, guys. Like I said, so with all the different vendors and all the different kinds of people you guys have there, how does someone get involved with you guys? Is there a kind of a process that they like, not saying they have to pass a test or anything like that, but how do they get involved with you guys? So we... Everything has been trial and error. Okay. So we are fine tuning our process, but right now we have a pretty decent process of vendors, artists, whoever wants to be a part of Wind Down has to apply. Mm -hmm. And we curate each event. So we don't want to have like three sunglass people yeah. mm -hmm. sitting next to each other. We make sure we have like at least one of each type of mm -hmm. whatever um, to have at the at the event. So that everybody gets a chance, but we we have so many submissions now. It's like we want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity. Um, but that's a beauty in it is that it's an opportunity for people to to be a part of it. What do you guys think is one of the big things that has helped you guys grow to the size you guys are now? I would I would definitely mm -hmm. say collaboration. That's I would never, you know, and, and collaboration is very important to wind up because that's how it began. Yes. It began as a collaborative mm -hmm. thing. You know, we realized that we wouldn't be able to um, sustain it or grow without um, relying on the people in our network. And so, think people like Feed the Ville has been very instrumental as far as collaborating with us as a vendor. Shout out to Feed the Ville. You know, I know you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, he has, he has his own. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people who have their own like branding already mm -hmm. their own things like established we like to bring them in and we see the value in that you know yeah. hey like we have something you have something let's bring it together and see what works mm -hmm. you know? right, so right. um and we and we like to do our vendors the same way a lot of our vendors actually have their own clout and mm -hmm. i hate using mm -hmm. the word clout but they have their own clout and we like to you know maximize that with what we have going on they got that motion yeah that know, they everybody got motion <laughs> and you know it works to, it works better when everybody has something to contribute mm -hmm. right you know so that's what it is like everybody contributes to the process and everybody like everybody looks at wind down and when they see their vendor at wind they're like oh my god my favorite vendors at wind down so yeah I'm go. so yeah so it, it, it pushes people to support our event and then it pushes people to support the vendors as well oh, i totally agree right. man collaboration is big uh, that's how we've grown you know it's not like we have 10 million followers or anything but i mean just this like this past year we've grown in a couple hundred followers man right. it's just through collaborating with the different people we have on the podcast helping promote because that's pretty much all we do man is we sit down we have a conversation kind of get y'all's backstory and then i think that helps people want to do business with you you right, know right. rather than just saying oh this is what i sell and like shake hands and you pay yeah, you sure. know like you learn where they from what they do like or like what was their life story and then you kind of hear how they made it to where they are today and then they're like oh okay i, I would much rather do business with you than say uh, X name, you know, some multi million dollar conglomerate. Right. I feel like people want to support that person more than gen, than just the big companies right, kind of right. thing. For sure. And and to that point, I think something that has been even more important than collaboration has just been good energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think I think that the reason why people mm -hmm. have gravitated to us is because everything that we've done has been from the heart. Yes. When we started with wine yes. and we weren't making any money, mm -hmm. we were working hard and we were just a group of people who came together who wanted to help Will. We wanted to help Will out, and we wanted to to realize Robbie's dream. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and we all came together, and we just wanted to do a cool thing. And everybody kind of felt that. So everybody that would come around were like, "Man, like this is just cool." They wanted to help. Right. Nobody wanted anything. Like the first couple of wind downs, people like Desi. I remember Desi Jones. She came. She's a she's a dope artist. She was at the last wind down. She's been in like two of them. She just wanted to film us setting up. Like every we had so many hands that came in in the beginning and throughout, just wanting to help for free and we still continue to have people who want to help yeah. and now we're in a position where we can actually pay people to help us that's a good I mean? feeling so, isn't yeah. it yeah. I really like when Don pulled that up because the energy that's if I, if I didn't say collaboration I wouldn't say energy mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying but Paying people is like a cornerstone of wind down because back when we had this idea, there was a culture in Jacksonville, especially around uh, amongst the artists in Jacksonville, where people were, you know, having this show structure where it's like, okay, if you bring like ten people to the show, we'll pay you this amount of money. But if you don't bring this X amount of people to the show, you're not going to be paid to perform. And yeah, then it's kind of dirty. I feel like you yeah, know what I mean. And then on top of that, you're like you have to pay to perform. So like as an artist. I always avoided those type of situations. I can I'm, understand you know, that. I'm an MC myself, so I could see it from that end. And so Wind Down was basically, we wanted to bring that different energy, that, that different structure where we paying people up front. You don't have to do none of the leg work. You don't have to promote if you don't want to. Just come and perform as you are. It will mm -hmm. pay you. So um, I wanted to change that climate in the city from, like, 
from the jump. And uh, with that spirit, like Dom said, that was just like our our authenticity to really want to help people, help the artists, help Will, um, and that's how we've grown. Yeah. Oh, I agree, man. Because, you know, artists, you got to, you know, you're paying for materials, you yeah. know, you're paying to go to these events and everything. And, you know, that's a big thing I see all around the city. Like, um, there's another one called a Bespoke House. I don't know if you yeah. guys have heard yeah. of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 They, yeah they, <clears throat> uh, they push real hard about that as well. It's like pay your artists, you know, not just mm-hmm. like they have to perform or get some kind of certain metric. You know, there's there's starving artists out here. I'm, I know you guys are aware of this. You know, it's, it's hard to make money out here nowadays, especially yeah. with just your craft. Yeah. So it's cool that you guys are willing to, you know, help help these artists, give them some money, you know, come and give them exposure at these events. It's it's really awesome, y'all. I think you guys are doing a great thing. And we were talking before the podcast. I love just seeing the collaboration of Jacksonville, man. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not just, hey, you come do this for me and that's it. We never talk again or anything like that. That's the main thing for me. Like, I try to keep in touch with all my guests. You know, if yeah. I see something, you know, like a post or if they have an event going on, share it, whatever it is. It's just, it really is that easy just to help promote people nowadays. It's like, it's just a good thing to do. Facts. There, yeah. there were people that I did not think we would be able to like collaborate with, like create jacks. I thought they were too big for us. I went, like, you know, what I'm saying? but now we're like, they're they're, they're, they're we're locked in with them, like because they know, see it, they, they see, see it. it. Mm-hmm. And I, I did want to um, touch on the fact of like community and relationships. Mm-hmm. I'm really big on that. Um, healing happens through community and relationships, and so to have a an entity that people can come together and build relationships amongst themselves with others that's 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 phenomenal like that's a healing thing to see and to be a part of um there are people that have done wind down for the first time there that's their first time ever showcasing their art ever performing and after each show they're just like wow like i can't believe i did that i can't believe like everybody welcomed me the way they did and that wouldn't have been able to be done without community and relationships so, literally yeah right, right on point because mm-hmm. i literally have a text message from one of our artists at the last wind down i'm not gonna just for you know confidentiality i'm not gonna say their name but they were like this was a life-changing opportunity for me yes like that what they said this was a life dream of mine too like you know just from the same person just you have no idea like this is my first time performing like this in front of a crowd that's like crazy. this crazy yeah just uh that makes me think about shout out to will uh mm-hmm. follow the vagabond that's his uh, instagram name um i always think about him when he said in the interview in another interview he said if he could create an opportunity for somebody to to blow up and say like yeah i remember that wind down or it was at wind down that I performed for the first time mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. showcase my art for the first time. If he could just create, uh, be a part of something like that, then his job is done. Like, yeah. And I truly feel that. Mm-hmm. No, that's, it's, that's why I love doing wind down. It's great giving people a platform. That's yeah. like the thing, like you guys brought like time and place. Like he had just moved to Jacksonville. And then after my interview with him, I just saw him on everything. I was like, okay. Right. Right. Same with John Hawkins, man. I saw him blowing up and doing his things. I was like, yes, man. I love, and it's not because of me. It's because of their hard work. Yeah, it just makes, sure. it makes me feel good just to see, you know, people who I think are going to do great things, just blow up, keep doing their thing and like just growing. And Jacksonville has really started to foster that community. Like you guys are saying now, right. it's not like back in the day where people were trying to hold, keep their, you know, keep their followers gatekeep. just to themselves, mm-hmm. gatekeep, or, yeah. you know, it's, it's cool to see that people are willing to go out there, extend the hand rather than like people having to really search hard for it yeah so it's big it's big but let's get a little bit into y'all's background i want to know some more about you guys because we've obviously talked a little bit i saw you guys run the news recently right as well absolutely Absolutely. me will and um larry shout out and uh it's a it's dj larry love right is it whenever you guys say yeah i say i think he's been on um he was on a buddy of mine podcast uh, og sessions i think he was on yep say shout out nick and joey um but i saw dj larry love was on there and then who's the other guy that's not here right now i'm sorry will will the will is what you guys are saying for back the back of bond, uh-huh. you know, later DJ Larry Love and Love Culture. Yeah, he does all that. No, I love to see it, guys. It's like just a big group of people getting together. But I'm gonna start off with you, Dom. So your background, man. So you you grew up in Jacksonville, or where no, you originally I from? Grew up in Nashville. Nashville. Okay. What made you move to Florida? Uh, school, man. So, um, you know, I uh, I went to UAB for undergrad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once I graduated, I decided I wanted to go to physical therapy school. So, went to the Florida A and M University. You know, yes, shout out sir. to the Rattlers. Shout out to the Rattlers. So, go Gators. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> it's all love. We got some orange in there. So hey, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, so, so we. Um, so, you know, uh, I was in school and um, Tallahassee was amazing. Um, 
that's where I actually got my craft as a physical therapist, you know. So once I graduated, I got an amazing opportunity to do a residency program with Brooks Rehabilitation. Oh, nice. So that's what brought me to Jacksonville. So it, really, education has been, it's funny that I'm throwing parties and shit now, you know what I'm saying? But it, it's like education has been what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. So like I moved to Jacksonville. Um, I was doing a one year of residency and a two year fellowship. So just, you know, I started to teach. I was uh, working with another program with one of my mentors, teaching other physical therapists. So that's, that's what I've been doing with, with my heart. Um, and from there, um, once I got finished with all of that work, I started to step more into entrepreneurship, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and that led into me, um, wanting to, really bring about one of my biggest dreams which has been uh, putting together a brand a centered around footwear right so as i mentioned the brand on my hat and the brand within my shirt um i uh, have a background in design and drawing and that kind of stuff and that's what i wanted to kind of pretty much bring together my, my talents you know my love for the human body and rehabilitation and exercise and helping people um and art Mm-hmm. You know? um, and that's kind of my place in wind down is the art side because of my background in that. Um, but but yeah, so so currently I'm just, you know, um, pushing the whole art vibe to wind down. I'm in the middle of, you know, my research with my shoe. I finally have been able to create a shoe that I can wear. I've been wearing it around for the last couple of weeks and I'm doing actual clinical research on it, hey. getting data. And I'm planning to have that done by the fall, you know, uh, Christmas, Christmas ish, you know, but that's uh and I met her, you know, when I moved oh, to Jacksonville. Yeah. yeah. So how's, was, how'd y'all meet? Tinder. Hey. Shout the, out to Tinder. So, shout Tinder. out to Tinder. There's not, Tinder. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong for with real? it, man. I say, I say it works nowadays. Like for me, like I met Shannon through work kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I, was also, I was also 18, 19. So Tinder was like a thing, but it just started. For sure, for yeah. sure. You know, but no, that's good. It's a real story. I love to hear how, like, you know, a real love story started. Yeah. I love to hear that. And how long yeah. have you guys, you guys are married, right? How, mm-hmm. how long have you guys been married for? Lord. Well, we've been together, what? Six, seven six years. years. Okay. Twenty eighteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much soon. So it's literally, literally as soon as I moved uh, to Jacksonville, we met pretty much. Nice, nice. Yeah. And you guys were, did you guys like kind of wait to live together for a little while? How did that? We jumped right in. Hey. Yeah. Like yeah. One year of meeting each other, being around each other, we jumped right in, had a baby, pandemic slapped us. Hey. It's just been. I, lo- I love your kiddo, by the way. At the safe house event, they were running <laughs> around. He, he was always talking to me. He, yeah. had a, he had like a little motorcycle. He was walking up. He's like, look at my motorcycle, a little toy thing. It was, yeah. it was super cute. I yeah, love yeah. that. So, with you guys, you guys brought up the child and everything. When y'all found out you were going to be parents, I always ask this to parents. Was it scary? Um, hell yeah. Yeah. Gotta be. Well, it was the pandemic. That's all I can say. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. So the pandemic had started when we found out. No. Yeah. But 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 the the, the initial. The initial, we were excited. Yeah. That's why we moved in together Mm -hmm. so quickly. We Mm -hmm. had a baby so quickly. And then life really did hit us when the pandemic started. Yeah. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't know. The pandemic was a a gift and a curse for us. Um, for those who who made it through everybody understands um but yeah we le- lots of lessons learned mm-hmm. i'll say that lots mm-hmm. of lessons i'm sure it's like you you have a child coming on the way you're like wow i gotta grow up and be an actual adult right. yes. because, you see like i remember as a kid you know like luckily enough i had parents who were doing their thing and i looked up to them as superheroes you know they always knew the right answer they knew like everything and then you get older and you're like oh they're just putting shit together just like we yeah, are on a daily facts, basis facts, you're yeah, like facts. but they're still just trying to figure shit out because my parents had me at the age i am now and I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm nowhere near, or I don't feel like I'm ready to have a kid yet. But it's something that we're talking about now. It's it's crazy to think it just time goes by so fast. You go from 18 to like 25, and it feels like just a blink of an eye. You know, yeah. you're working, you're trying to build it, whether your business or build up your, you know, just like trying to grow and get a home or do all that stuff. And it just feels like time just goes by so yeah. fast. Does, man. How old is your little one now? He's four, four. now. Four. Yes. That's wild. Okay, it's a fun time. It's a fun time. You got any kids or anything, Robbie? I have a niece. I have a twin. I have a twin brother, and I have a niece. Hey. <laughs> that counts. Hey, that, that That's does count. So. What's funny is like uh, I have a little brother. So my parents divorced when I was young, and then my mom remarried, and I have a, ten, a brother who's ten years younger than me. Yeah. So I remember holding this little man when I was ten years old, like a baby, all swaddled up and everything. And now he's in high school, talking to me, asking me about girls and doing all right. like he's about to go drive and shit. I'm like, yeah. first of all, I ain't getting in that oh, car with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, was like, yeah. I ain't getting in that car with you. Never. But no, man, it's just it's cool to see kind of stuff develop because I remember my parents always trying to tell me like, oh, time will go fast. 
class, you'll start seeing things, and now we we are where we are. Yeah, we're we're the new adults. Things. We're the next generation up. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. I, I, it is scary, but I like our generation, man. Yeah. I think I think we're a lot more of a kinder generation. Yeah, true. You know, true. we're not just qu- quite so hard on each other. Even though even though you see stuff on social media, I don't think that's all like the real true thing. Yeah. You step outside, like at a wind down event. Everybody wants to collaborate. Not everybody's just sitting there hating on you, sitting in the corner, like they're like kind of mm-hmm. eyeing you down or anything. Yeah. So it's it's a crazy thing. So with you though, say so you work in the mental health side of I things. Do. How did you get involved in that? So I let's see. I graduated from Valdosta State. Shout hey. out Valdosta State. Okay. Okay. The second blazer. Um, so it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you had that. But um, yes, Valdosta State in South Georgia. Mm-hmm. And we actually used to come to Jacksonville to party. So we would come to Jacksonville to go to the beaches, to go to the mall. That's hilarious. Okay. I yes. That. So I can this see is it. around like 2013, 2014, around that time we would come. Um, so I, I always liked Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I ain't never hated on Jacksonville. So, um, but yeah, I did my undergrad in psychology nice. and then I stayed, did my uh, master's in marriage and family therapy. Um, people don't know that Valdosta State has one of the largest student run um, clinics really? in the nation. Yes. Okay. So we actually see, we're in it like soon as we graduate we are working directly with um with actual clients that's awesome real life that's, really, that's so, really cool yeah. yeah so i got i got started in that and it was either jacksonville or atlanta that's typically the two you go from mm-hmm. from there and i was like mm, i like atlanta but just something about jacksonville is calling me and i came on down to jacksonville and yeah the rest is history you made a perfect decision is what yeah, it sounds like yeah so i'm so glad i made that decision um 2017 came down here um i worked for the department of children and family services nice. and um the the department of juvenile justice those okay. kids so um just a the opportunity kids as I call them I don't call them at risk youth anymore mm-hmm. um, because all they need is opportunity I agree so that they really threw me to the fire like straight out of grad school working with um, you know just high risk just really in their homes with them doing in home therapy working with their parents foster care kids mm-hmm. like that really opened my eyes to a lot and it, it helped me get to know the city a lot better so that's how i was able to learn about the city and you know rub elbows with some higher ups and, mm-hmm. and people in the court system so yeah that's, now that's that's beautiful that you did that to be honest with you like uh, i used to whenever i was younger and i was still playing ball and stuff we did a summer camp where kids at, mm-hmm. at risk or you know kids needing an opportunity would come in they wouldn't have shoes we give them shoes you know mm-hmm. give them a shirt work on them with the school and kind of like work on like life stuff you know what i mean if, yep. they, if they don't have like a safe area you know they run the streets during the day kind of thing they that was a safe space that they could come play play yep. basketball and everything but with what you're saying like going in homes uh mm-hmm. i did the pest control job for four years and i would go into these houses man and, you know parents are trying to do what they can yep right? they got four or it's five kids four or five kids you know trying to do what they can usually the older sister or older brothers you know helping take care of the kids doing all that kind of stuff Ooh. so it helped give me a better perspective on that as well because you don't know what people have gone through or what's going on in their background mm-hmm. and why they may be acting out or might have an issue or anything where really even a good conversation or just giving them like you said an opportunity yes. it will help really kind of change what's going on in their lives so that's beautiful that you did that yeah now and I love the whole mental side, uh, mental health side of things. I think it's really interesting. Does she ever use any mental health like tricks on you, or, anything, or like any of the psychology I, tricks I mean, on hey, you? Look, if she do, I wouldn't know it. Goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, yeah. no, she, no, no, it's like Jedi. she's slick with it. It'd be wow. like it'd be like a good. Jedi mind trick for real. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? If she doing it, it's are like, you doing it now? Right. That's that's what it's like. It's like is, you this, doing... is this happening? Right. Try, actually, ironically, <laughs> ironically, the therapist hat goes off when I am dealing with him. Like I don't know where it goes. Mm-hmm. It just gets flung. I mean, that's that's like relationship. Relationships. I mean, like when you're dealing with your family and that kind of stuff, like your profession kind of goes out the door, like because oh, yeah. you, know, you don't you don't want to you don't. It's kind of hard to take work home with you and yeah. be you know and you know I'm out of the you know with my job I I I kind of because I work with people physically I do get a chance to. Um, talk to the mental side a bit but with her dealing with that all day you gotta turn that shit off at a certain point yeah i do oh i'm sure it's it's, it's tiring after a while it doesn't matter what profession you're in you know some days you're just like you like clock out or you walk out of work you're just like (laughs) Like, i mean the main thing i keep is the communication side yes so i mean you can't like 
turn the communication part yeah. aspect off. And um, communication is an art form, mm-hmm. and so that that is something I truly carry with me everywhere I go. That's something so. I'm big with as well. Like with me and her, you know, been together for seven, eight years. You're gonna get into fights. You're gonna have issues and stuff. I'm very much a person where I'm like, if I'm pissed off, I'm just gonna say something that's not what I really feel. I'll tell her, I'm like, give me a minute. Just let me come to you, and we'll come back. We'll reconvene once I've calmed down. I had an issue, or you know, also I say what I mean. You know, I'm not very much one of a sugar coater. I'm pretty much straightforward with kind of every single person, and I expect her to be the same way. I would don't. I hate whenever you have to kind of pull something out of someone because after that, I'm just like, I, I really don't care yeah, anymore. I'm like, if sure. I'm pulling this out of you. So uh, me and her have worked on that a bunch. You know, communicating, getting through stuff. You yeah. know, even on here, man. Like we we did uh, when we were getting married, we ran through a thing we called it Sunday Hangouts. It's like a, our podcast inside of this podcast, cool. and we basically led people through us getting married. So like walking through, like uh, I was talking about it like a week before on the podcast. She wasn't here for it, letting everybody know I was going to propose to her, and then. And, you know, kind of went through that. We got back in Colorado and I feel like we told the story like a day later that we got proposed and, you know, walked through the whole situation, getting finding vendors, finding our place where we we're going to get married. And then we did a podcast the day after we got married. It was, it was pretty wow. cool. Well, like you, you brought people into the world. Yeah. yeah. He's like, this is where I feel like a place where I can be vulnerable. I have no problem. Like I talked about, like I was telling you about like suicidal thoughts or if I'm going through some shit, like this is where I like my safe space where I put stuff out in the world where if someone can relate to it and help them, that's the way I look at it. That's I think cool. it's kind of cool. So Robbie, tell me about your upbringing, my man. What? What's up with you? I have a big educational background. A lot of people don't really know much about my personal life because I don't put it out there. Honestly. I'm like a, I'm like a kind of like a well-known, unknown person. Mm-hmm. I would say like, so um, my mom is an educator and my dad is from Jamaica. So nice. um, education was education and music was a big part of my household. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I grew older, uh, when I was a when I was an adolescent, um, I got an opportunity with a company called One Jacks, basically to be a facilitator for these things called Metro Town. Okay. And so when I was 16 years old at Stanton College Prep, I was facilitating workshops called these called Experimental Learning Lab, mm-hmm. where we would put different kids from different ba- uh, diverse backgrounds, educational, religious backgrounds, into like a in, like into a space together for four days, and we would basically teach them about unified diversity. Oh, nice. Like, okay. You know, how everybody's different, but we can come together. And mm-hmm. We had these different things. So mental health was a big part of it. Breaking down people's walls, kids crying, like 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 tears, emotions. Mm-hmm. Like we fed them. We um, we we broke them up into small groups. We get we went deeper, and each day was a deeper dive. Right. And so I was I was always emotionally intelligent. I was always like in tune with people as a kid, and I've been doing that type of work for eleven years. So when I moved to Tallahassee to go to college, um, I had the opportunity to become a teaching artist. So like I got okay. to my artist bag really, really good, and I was able to form formulate that into a business, basically. Like where um, <clears throat> I reached out, I, rem- I remember like I had the idea. I was talking to my friend. I said, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to this company in Miami called the Motivational Edge. And at the time, I knew they were moving to Tallahassee, and so I was able to go to Black and Black Rhyme, which was the, in- the idea, the inspiration behind Wind Down. Oh, nice. Okay. And um, I met them there they saw me perform on stage my poetry and they reached out to me and they was like hey we want you to be a teaching artist and mm-hmm. so I did that for a year um, and at Tallahassee Developmental Center it was right off uh, Jack McLean and I remember it like it was yesterday and um, I was teaching artists how to, bu- how to I was teaching kids how to song write, make beats, record, all that cool stuff, right? Um, and then I had the opportunity to basically work at a middle school there um, while doing the art stuff on the side. I was still in school. Um, after that was all said and done, I moved back to Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville, and I was working with the Boys and Girls Club. For hey, like two years, man, you I know? love the Boys and Girls Club. So yep. I was really <clears> tapped <throat> in, man. Like the the, the, <clears throat> the Carpenter Shop Center in 2020 during the pandemic was one of the things that got my start um, with you with being in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. After that, you know, so youth development, education that was all like basically in my background as a kid. Um, you know, you know, growing up in that that field, mm-hmm. but poetry, right? So. <sighs> I did so much, Connor. So, it sounds like, yeah, man. It sounds like you've all been busy. Yeah. yeah. So, so spoken word, right? So, spoken word is a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. Being a writer, because that's my escape. Yeah. When I when I feel down or whatever, I write and I try to like formulate my thoughts through my poetry and my art, right? And um, that was an opportunity for me to get into music, and that was an opportunity for me to travel, and that was an opportunity for me basically to like use my skill set to also 
use my like to be in the youth development yeah. to use that in the youth space to help them kind of like uh find more about themselves and create their self esteem and so I use all of that to build a network of artists and poets and visual artists and X, X, Y, and Z. So at the beginning of Wind Down, my, my primary role was like basically finding artists. Yeah. Like, you know, putting the performances together. Now, we don't have to do none of that because people come to us wanting to be a part of the process and stuff like that. So um, my, my, I have a twin brother and um, growing up in that household dynamic was very, very interesting because I, I always had somebody alongside me mm-hmm. to see things how I saw them. Yeah. So I could always validate my existence through him. Like, mm-hmm. if I knew something was off, I could always double check with my brother, be like, am I tripping? You know what I mean? Or if he knew something was off, he would double check with me and I would be able to do that. So, um, it's, it, so essentially, I never, I never had, like, any problem, like, like doubting myself or doubting my reality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I had somebody to re- yeah. basically You're bouncing to. off each other. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. So like I never really dealt with like the 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 ills of that. You know what I mean? So I think that's kind of how I was able to like acclimate to reality itself. Like mm-hmm. just knowing that my I'm here, I know who I am and I was able to like visibly put that into the world. So That's good, man. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Crazy. I was say like for me, man, I didn't know who I was probably the first 15 to 18 years of my life. It took me moving out to really figure out like my values, what I wanted to do kind of thing and it's it's a hard thing. I feel like that's something that everybody struggles with on a daily basis mm-hmm. of like who am I? That's the main thing. But that's the name of the podcast. That's who right. Are you? That's <laughs> right. Who are you but like, you know, and 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 I I could speak to that in two different ways though. Like as an artist, I I had to struggle to find myself as an artist. Mm-hmm. Like um I changed my name like seven different times bro like <laughs> rob otis there was ferocious styles there was sound boy and then there's robbie well four times so, so like robbie so i changed my name like three different times to get to this part so um my fans would tell you man they'd be like man i don't know what to call you now man what's your name now man i know you as this i know you as that but i'm like i know i know i know so it's like you know finding a centralized name is important I, like finding an identity as an artist is mm-hmm. equally as important as like finding your own identity because what you choose to put out publicly that's what people also know you as too so right. like you know i was i was finally fi- i was finally glad i stuck to something like like on the artist side of myself yeah that represented everything about who I am. So now that's cool, man. And it's like, you're evolving every yeah. time you change yeah. your name, you know, you're evolving. And I think that's what you should do as a person every single year. Like, you know, I make a goal for like what I want to do every year. Yeah. That's like at least a couple of things, like with my business, like this, you know, like getting my LLC, getting a website, I'm going to actually start getting merch here sooner or later as well. Mm-hmm. Just start trying to change things up. But, <laughs> just like you guys are doing, man. It's just you evolve every single year. You want to grow. You want to make like, get better. I feel like once you get stagnant is when things don't change. Yeah. You don't grow. You know, either as a person or your business doesn't grow. So that's yeah. huge that you're willing to do that. Yeah. And I love that you guys like working with kids and everything. That's a big thing in mind. I feel like kids are like the last pure thing on earth. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't. They're not born with hate in their heart. They're not born with like any kind of racism or anything like that. They're just born and they're a blank slate. Yep. It's all pe- people around them. How they're raised is really kind of how they change up into where they are today, kind of thing. Like Homelander, they'll be like. Homelander. <laughs> That's why, like, with me, like, I, I grew up really lucky. Like, my parents, even though they were split, they both had similar values, you know, treat people well. You know, uh, I'm not personally religious, but, like, I grew up in a very religious home with my mom. And, you know, like, I, like, even though I may not believe in, like, the big uh, guy in the sky kind of thing, I do believe in the values. Treat people right. well. Be a yeah. part of your community. Help where you can. You know, I feel like that's a big thing that everybody can live by, whether nice. you're religious or not, to be a good person, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. And that's where I'm, I feel like I'm very lucky and blessed to be raise that way and help be able to put it out like this kind of thing. Yes. That's dope. And it sounds like you guys are all doing it. And I love to see it. Like I said, it's yeah. you guys are good people. I love sitting down with good people who I know are just trying to help collaborate and do good things. I, I really don't like being around people who are dumber than me. Like I like, <laughs> I, I like being around people who are smarter than I me. I feel that. No, I, don't, I, 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 just, I just really feel that way. Cause like, I don't grow that way. I don't, I don't like to um, be around people who don't have ambition mm. um, or like, you know, or like they're of anything like, like these two, like they, they, I think they're so smarter than me, but that's a great thing. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I feel like, you know, I, I'm able to feed off of that in a, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm smarter than them in some ways. You know, iron sharp as iron, no, so You like, definitely yes. just listed a bunch of stuff we did not know about you. I'm <laughs> right. just like, what? I'm yeah. glad that we're all <laughs> learning. I'm glad we're all learning together. Yeah, I love I, I, this. We, t- we tapped me and Robbie tapped and he, he talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> tap, 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 tap. But no, that's 
how you should like you know everybody's gonna have different strengths that's just mm-hmm. what it is you know there's things like i'll bounce shit off shannon and i'll be like what do you think about this is there an angle like this because maybe i'm looking at something just wrong or just i can hit it at a different angle and it's the same with you guys right. with what you're doing and usually if you're the smartest person in the room most of the time you're not but right. like if you feel like you are the smartest person in the room you're not going to sit down and try to learn and kind of feed off of people <laughs> you know like i've sat down with people who are like you know i sat down with the ceo of jaa here in jacksonville i don't know what the fuck how the hell you get up there and do that kind of stuff and right. become like a multi-billionaire doing that kind of stuff but you just take little pieces or you learn like salesmanship or something yeah. like uh we had a guy his name is uh on instagram the orange guy shout out sean um he's big into marketing so i was in there asking him questions that i was personally curious about because i want to learn how to grow this so yeah. it's like that's kind of how i look at it it's cool. just taking time and just kind of picking stuff up off different kinds of people yes. but we were talking about one thing you kind of skated by it real quick let's talk about the shoe man okay. are you are you okay to talk yeah, about the shoe? Sure, okay i just want to make sure i didn't know if anything was you know not right. allowed to be no, talking about on top, that's 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 on top of that hey that I shoe mean, coming out Oh, yeah, we could talk about it. So, so I do have a question. So I, I saw one shoe that was kind of getting posted up on uh, Safe House, the yeah. white ones and everything. Is that you or is that something else? Oh no. So, um, so shout out to my boy Sean Wolf. You might be talking about Sean. That's so, who I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, so Sean. What's so? So what's so? I'll talk about Sean for a little bit. Like when we were mentioning um, how people grow from wind down, he oh, was the yeah. first person mm-hmm. yeah. that I thought of. Like Sean was somebody that um, we got together with. Um, I. I met him. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think where I met Sean, but we we met him. We met him. I, I met him first at an event, and we just kind of connected. Um, just a really really good guy. Um, I invited him out to wind down like at the last minute, and he pulled up and he like did like his best piece ever. He was like, oh, "I'm about to be in wind down." He went crazy, and like from there, every he's the kind of guy. Every opportunity that he gets, he takes it and runs. Mm-hmm. With me, you know what I mean? And um. He was even somebody that we like. We would talk about the shoes, like we would talk about because he, he saw I was working on the shoes, and and we were kind of talking about how to go about it, and and, and you say he got a shoe, and he got man, man, Sean is that's my boy. Shout out to Sean, Sean Wolf, man. Like he's he's just somebody that shout out Sean, he, yeah, man. He's just such a hard worker, man. And, he um, is. He really, he really is. He he really had a breakthrough at at our December show. So yes, yeah. Sean, let me know, man. You can, we can come talk. You I'm more than I'm more than yeah, happy to. Sure. No, he, he got a podcast got now too. Podcast, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit, man, I'll come on the podcast too. Let me know. Real we real can, we can we can collaborate. But pod, go go ahead. Pod, I'm sorry. Pod. <laughs> yeah, man. No, but um, but but when it comes to um the shoe, um, so like I said, I'm a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm a physical therapist. When I when I and I was, um, I've always been in art. Like I, I drew these cartoons. I drew. You oh, know nice. I mean? So, so I've always been into art as a kid, and that was like my first love. And I would love sneakers. I love fashion as a kid. So, like as a kid, I would always draw sneakers and clothes and all kinds of stuff. So when I got to PT school. I'm learning about the body. I was taking a prosthetics and orthotics class. That's like, you know, prosthetics are, you know, essentially um, things that people need mm-hmm. devices to help them move around and yep. such. Like, you know, and, and orthotics are like bracing and those mm-hmm. kind of things, right? Those things are 20% of your core insurance, too. You pay you pay 20% of core insurance for those things. Right? Hey, there you go. See, insurance, he know about it. He know about it. So, 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 right. It all comes together. Exactly, exactly. So, like, when I was in school, when I was in PT school, I we started to talk about orthotics and, um, and orthopedic shoes and I learned how much they cost. Yeah. Right. So, so let's say your grandmama needs some orthopedic shoes, like them big, th- them big clunky ass shits might be $1,500. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you yep. may only get one pair, one or two inserts, pair of shoes yep. every five pair, every five years, mm-hmm. five yeah. years. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. So if, with insurance, your insurance will only pay for those shoes. Right. So essentially the price of them are way jacked up. And, you know, from a functionality standpoint, they may not actually be doing what the foot and the body needs. So mm-hmm. first I was like, man, I could, my first thought was back in like 2016, I could make some shoes that look way better than these. Right. Mm-hmm. So that was just my thought. Way better and way cheaper. Fast forward um, when I was doing my residency. So, you know, within physical therapy, you don't have to do a residency program. Okay. But within ortho, within like a, a medical, when you're a medical doctor, you know, if you wanted to be an orthopedist or you wanted to be a podiatrist, like you have to specialize. Yep. After medical school, you have to go and specialize. So for PT, you don't have to. But I was blessed to be able to do um, residency and fellowship. So I got a lot of extra training. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So so within that time, man, I learned a lot of shit and, and a lot of things that the average PT. <clears throat> don't know so i was uh, i took a class um with a guy named tony Barr out of wisconsin he was a physical therapist who worked for uh the, the army for like 20 years right so um 
a lot of these, obviously working with uh, guys who are doing PT and in the Army, they do a lot of running in those boots, and they would have a lot of foot problems. Mm-hmm. So he developed a lot of techniques and a lot of interesting nuances uh, to how the foot works that the common, the common orthotic world didn't really know about. So we saw he started to he taught us about metatarsal arts pads and um, you know just uh, different ways to look at providing the foot with support other than the standard art support. The standard art support goes into your medial arts, right? You have mm-hmm. four, three different arts. You have your, your lateral arts, <clears throat> anterior arts, medial, lateral arts. Yep. So the standard art supports, it, it puts an arts in there right in the middle of your foot, but that's not actually functional, right? That is where your foot will drop. You know, people who have flatter feet, mm-hmm. that's where your foot will drop. But you, if you just play something that cushions that, that's not, um, it's not really fixing the function. The, the more functional units of your foot are the forefoot and the rear foot. Mm-hmm. What happens in the midfoot is just the result. There's not a whole lot of muscles there. There's a big ligament, you know, your spring ligament, which is your plantar fascia. Mm-hmm. And that's how people develop plantar fasciitis when that um, arch drops. And I'm sure you know, and as a ba- former basketball player, former athlete, you kind of know about foot pain, foot problems, and those types of things. I got flat feet just because I got such long, I had those long, like, flipper feet, basically. And, right, yep. exactly. And, and and so, and the thing that we don't realize is, is that, you know, athletes, football players, basketball players develop flat feet. It's not so much because of your long feet it's because of the footwear that we wear that's true you know we're animals you you don't we don't see cats and dogs wearing shoes but even you know i'm I'm not doing a good job i'm I'm trying to be fly today with the shoes i got on today but you could you you see when you have a shoe that has a more a more narrow toe Mm -hmm. that is how your foot is going to form yes right you know when you look at your foot your foot is supposed to be wide for Mm -hmm. balance your big toe is big as hell for a reason you know and every time you walk your big toe is the last thing that is supposed to touch the ground and push off right Mm -hmm. for propulsion so through me learning all this shit in school um i realized that okay for walking your big toe has to be the last thing that touches the ground when you're wearing narrow shoes that just can't happen and what happens is the stress goes through your midfoot and your ankles and and that what that's what causes pain mm-hmm. pain develops from Increased forces placed on a structure that it can't handle. Mm-hmm. That's how pain develops. Yeah. And we're talking about normal pain. So with me knowing how the foot is supposed to move and with me knowing how to draw, I said, well, shit, I could design something that would actually facilitate how the foot functions. And I know that these, these shoe companies, <laughs> just based upon how they look, Nike, Nike's, my, Nike doesn't consult physical therapists. No. They don't. You know, you know the, when it comes to how shoes are made, they may consult a podiatrist, but a podiatrist is, um, they know about the structure of the foot, but they don't know about the function. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a physical therapist, but there isn't anybody in the medical field that knows about how the body works like physical therapist. So yeah. with me having that knowledge, with me going to doing a, a whole extra three years of school, I learned it. Oh no, I learned, I could look at a shoe. I could look at things and know how it's supposed to work. So I just took all of that and put it into a design, mm-hmm. um, that, that, that should help you walk better. Right. So, yeah. Where I'm at now, I'm just uh, trying to do the actual testing. Everything has been a hypothesis. I've written an abstract, um, and now I'm in the uh, the testing phase, basically. How do you find time for this, guys? You guys Talk got shit. so Talk your shit. man. Yeah. No, that was actually that was dude. That was super crazy. interesting. That was so, and we like, just nerded out. He just right, like, a yeah. bad so class. Numbers off. So well, no. The thing about that stuff is like, I, so I come from a medical background. I was originally going to school to be a nurse. Yes. Uh, back before COVID happened, mm-hmm. lost a job, had to pay bills. But my whole family is uh, family full of nurses, whether ICU or cool. um, I say a mix of different kinds of fields when it comes to the medical field. So everything he's talking about, I love that stuff. I find the human body super interesting, and your feet are very important. I yes. feel like a lot of people don't think about that you're walking on them every single day yes and you know as you were saying like the way your feet your toes are supposed to like splay out and not be condensed in like this i mean if you look at basketball players uh, let's talk about lebron yes lebron's known for having horrible feet Mm -hmm. but that's from the shoes he's wearing running up and down the court he has toes are kind of all like junked up on each other and i feel like what you're doing is a big thing you know especially for taller people you know a lot of times like i don't have crazy foot problems but that's also i only played ball for a little while and now i try to keep myself Somewhat healthy when it comes to the like the shoes wise. I don't like clothes like where everything's pushed in because exactly. it'll, it'll fuck up my feet. It right. hurts real bad. Sure. Um, 
So with the design of the shoe and everything, what kind of process do you have to go through? Are you having to get like patent pending or right. how's, how's that whole process go for this? Yeah, for sure. So everything right now is all homegrown. So, okay. so um, um, when it comes to the whole design process, you know, I started with the design. Um, I realized along the way that for me to do this on my own, um, I would have to get into uh, something called 3D printing. So yep. um, I was actually taking a, a class with a soul collector called Sneaker Essentials where I was learning about the shoemaking process. Process. And I actually met one of my good friends, my boy Josh Douglas. Shout out to him. He he, he has a 3D printing company um, where he 3D prints a lot, you know, figures and other things. He's in other industries, but what's his company name? Um, Do you know? Uh, uh, MPA. He, he has a bunch of different companies. Okay. Um, MPA um, and Stray Dog. Uh, oh, Stray Doug. Stray Doug Labs. <laughs> Yeah, he got a bunch of different. But no, shout, you're, out, shout out to Josh Douglas. No, no, you're good, man. I was yeah, saying, anytime yeah, you guys, I love shouting out people who are doing good stuff, sure. man. So you're, everybody's more than welcome to get shout out. For I love sure, that. for sure. He's, um, he's like a mechanical engineer by trade. Yes, right? yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. he's an engineer, right? He's, That's wild. Man. Yeah, exactly. I, I can't imagine. Right, for sure. So it was like so. We met, um, and I knew that I needed an engineer, mm-hmm. right, to for me to make my, you know, my my idea reality. So. Uh, we kind of connected on the 3D printing. So he was already into that. He kind of gave me some information. And that's kind of what exposed me more to 3D printing. Um, so I realized that I would need, like, because essentially to make a shoe like we like we make, you, you need a mold. So for each size, you, you have to make a mold, and that can cost up to $10,000. I don't got $10,000. I so, understand So that. imagine you got 12 different pairs. That's like $120,000. So, yeah. so a 3D printer is like 300 400 bucks. So. So essentially, when it comes to the whole process, um, I drew it up. I spent some time learning uh, CAD design software, but I couldn't really get it. So now I outsource. So drew up the design, sent it off to a, to a couple of different guys overseas. They give you back a CAD file, um, and then I'm able to put it into um, my computer, put the file in my 3D printer, and, and produce it. Right. So I haven't had got to the point to where I'm needing any. I'm de- you know, patenting is definitely something I'm going to need for sure. Mm-hmm. That's kind of why I haven't really released it yet. Um, and, and the cool thing is that you know, I'm, I'm able to talk about it because, um, you know, the, the nuances of how it works, um, you'd have to, for one, you'd have to be a, be a physical therapist, a medical professional to really understand how and why I'm doing what it is that I'm doing and how to actually mm-hmm. make it work. I understand. And, and you, could, you, could look at, you could look at the shoe and see it, but you can't really explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't really know why it works. Why the inside is the way it is, the shaping exactly, of everything. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So from a, from a, um, a stepwise process is is essentially you know, um, and I'm essentially going to uh, um, I, I want to do some um, some gait analysis. Okay. Right. So essentially. Um, have uh, have somebody walk in my shoes versus some other different pairs of shoes look at where the foot lands how force is dispersed so that i can be able to tell where the force is being placed right so if i'm able to walk in my shoe and see that um the force goes primarily to the calf and the musculature mm-hmm. i will know that walking is more efficient right gotcha. because right. again if you look in the books if you know how the body moves the body is supposed to move in a particular way it just mm-hmm. is you know certain muscles are supposed to activate at certain phases of the gait cycle and if it doesn't it's going to result in problems when yep. people have flat feet their knees typically go in yep. knee pain hip pain all that shit back pain mm-hmm. you know so um but but so essentially when it comes to actually getting them out i'm um, have two different options you know i, I talked to a guy who worked at Nike and Puma and hey, Adidas and um, the advice he gave me is, you know, either you, you know, if you, you know, you could avoid having to get a patent and get a copyright if you just go fast with it. You know, if you get okay. it done, you get it out fast and then you can actually get your cut your patenting more on the back end or you can go the route of collaborating with somebody or, or building up the funds, you know, ten twenty thousand dollars to get it patented. But, gotcha, gotcha. But, um, but either way it goes, I'm still in the trenches with it. You know, no, you're good, man. And like I said, all three of you guys are very impressive, by the way. I hope you all know I've been impressed throughout this whole interview with what you guys have done in your life and everything and just also all the different stuff you guys are involved in. It's very impressive. You guys should all be proud of yourselves. Appreciate it. Appreciate I, it. I love and it. Shout out to Larry and Will because they're they're very impressive as well. That's they why are. that's why t- honestly like that's why our team like that's why we've been able to do all this shit is because we're all so um dope individually mm-hmm. and you know and all five of us are able to come together and and just kind of find our lane and just yeah collaborate in such let, a great way. let them know they're they're more than welcome on the podcast it's just i'm limited to yeah. the yeah. four and i wasn't trying to exclude anybody yeah, i wasn't no, trying no, to be a pain in the ass yeah, no, we, i was just like this is all i got right now and no, until we can right. build out a full studio get a little bit a little bit extra stuff going on we get over there Shan. 
Okay. Uh, so I got two final questions for you guys. And like I said, you guys have been awesome. I love, I love y'all's story. And also I let everybody know anytime it's like, like I enjoy the interviews and everything. You guys are more than welcome anytime. So if you guys have uh, just one and like, just one of y'all wants to come sit down or all three of you guys want to come back, you guys are more than welcome. It's always an open door policy. Just let me know what's going on and we get you in here. Um, but I got two final questions for you guys and it's going to be for all three of y'all as well. So my first one is what is the next goal or what is your next feat that you're trying to do with wind down Wednesday? I will let Dom. I will let Dom speak on that. Okay. Um. So, so the next goal is uh, the wind down food and wine fest, That's right? Hey. So, um, we were uh, lucky enough to uh, win a grant competition competition with Downtown Jacks, um, a place making Jacks. Um, so we submitted for that application in, back in November, and we were awarded a grant. Yes, sir, hey. to be able to put on the wind down food and wine festival so what is that so this is something that we have planned for right now it's planned to be around labor day weekend we're kind of nailing down some dates uh, but we're planning to do it at lift every voice and sing park downtown in la villa Mm -hmm. um and that is very purposeful for us with the uh with the overall community goals and purpose of what we're trying to do with wind down, but we're essentially bringing a a, a large festival to the city. So guys be on the lookout for more information about that. And I I want Robbie Kalia to talk a little bit more about like, you know, like we talked about why we want, like why we want to actually do it in La Villa. So La Villa is a historic part of downtown Jacksonville and just a big part of Jacksonville history period. Um, our goal was to install in La Villa because we want to impact that area. Our goal is impactful. We have a community goal of wind down to basically impact every area that we install in. And we think that La Villa would have been a, is an amazing choice because, one, that area has such a rich black history to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and wind down is um, an advocate just for history and just for Jacksonville, just for artists, period, especially black and brown artists. Um, so um, having it in that area, I think, would be um, that's one of the reasons why Placemaker really loved our idea mm-hmm. um, because to install in that area of town would have been is something unprecedented and then that left every voice to sing part being activated June 27th I believe yeah yep. next, week, next week you know we, we, would, we would actually be one of the first installments in that part hey, so that's um, all about the, us we, we, have, we have a long game we have a long game mentality you know what I'm saying we have, oh, a, yeah. we have a Kobe Bryant Mamba, Mamba mentality what I mean by that is that we play a long game for a reason uh, because we know that there's money going to be put into Phoenix too Yep. We know that there's money going everywhere. So we 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 really want to solidify ourselves as look. We're doing this on a we we've been doing this organically on a high scale for a very, for a, over mm-hmm. a year. Yeah. Off the strength. And, and off the strength of, and the love and Muscle. like this is our purpose, our passion, you know, and we realize that this is like a God-given thing. And so we want to put it in that area for the city to see that okay look we can have a big festival style event bring the city out everybody's safe everybody's protected everybody's having a good time and we could do it right here in downtown so i think i think we're going to break a lot of barriers a lot of um goals people are going to uh have their percept- perceptions challenged mm-hmm. and they're going to realize that oh my god um the city had the wrong idea about hip hop. Yes, they had they had the Talk wrong they had the wrong yes. idea about music. They mm-hmm. had the wrong idea about violence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so um, hip hop for me is very important. You know, and just changing the narrative of how the city of Jacksonville looks at hip hop is where I want to start, and then I want to change the narrative of how the nation looks like hip hop if we get we would get to that that stage. Yeah. Because Jacksonville did not always favor hip hop or mm-hmm. arts. And so we're changing that narrative. We're showing Jacksonville that there's value in hip hop, that there's value in art. Put money, put funding back into these programs mm-hmm. because we're 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 showing them every month that people want these things. There's, they there's do. a demand for it. So, I agree. And we're supplying that demand. And I'm cool with being a supplier. We're cool with that. You know, <laughs> so, we, we, listen. If y'all don't want to do it, we'll we'll gladly do it. And there's there's people like like you know like place making jacks. And you know she doesn't want her name shout out, but I want to say shout out to Katie, shout you know, because she she shout she understands. <laughs> the mission she understands the assignment very well you know what i'm saying and there are, you know and i feel as if like we are um doing the work and we have the vision and we have the heart um to change the city for the better 
No, I agree with you, man. And I like the, the the challenging of the idea of hip-hop. Yeah. Because it takes people coming out and seeing what it really is. A lot of times people see what they see on social media or see all this other stuff, and that's really not what the world is, man. And, like, uh, like when we were talking about the Safe House event, you know, like, I went out there. I'm not an artist in any way, shape, or form. You yeah. know, I, I barely mess with the digital art of make the logo and stuff. Mm-hmm. But seeing what you guys can do, whether it's through music or painting or mm-hmm. drawing or making designs, I find that amazing. So going into these events, I learned so much like that art event that I went to for John man I sat there and just sat in the back and just listened because it really helped me learn about you know what people are talking about the different ideas and what like art makes them feel or even the music and everything I think it's a beautiful thing Carter that's a really good point like honestly one thing I've learned through wind down is that um all the all these different elements that we bring to it it makes us kind of like a a piece of it too like mm-hmm. we, we could talk on those things now like we could talk yeah. on vendorship we could talk on art we could talk on music mm-hmm. and, and it makes us experts in those fields like yep. we, don't, we don't have to speak been years doing visual art because we have friends who do it on a high level yep. we can and we could tap into them and get knowledge from them yep. you don't you don't have now you don't have to worry about being a musician because you can come to wind down and talk to a musician who's exactly. done it for a while mm-hmm. like we you know Kalia Kalia is now like you know she got into her bag as a, like a stage director she 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 really <laughs> Developed this like creative. Yeah, thing. I don't know where it came from. You guys got all these wind there, down. Yeah, but it was like the beauty of wind down is that we mm-hmm. help give a voice or yeah. give breathe life into people's crafts that mm-hmm. people are like second guessing. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I've always been good at graphic design to a certain degree. I created my own cookbook and all my logos uh, for more life wellness. My business, my entire website. Her website's crazy. Mm-hmm. The, my and entire interior website, design, yeah. interior, interior design, design as well as well. decorating offices. Yeah. For different people I'm like oh I guess I, I ain't no real artist I'm just <laughs> that's you know. real art to me fam I and guess. I never I just never accepted it as such until wind down mm-hmm. until they was like hey we need a logo and I'm like I get, okay I'll make a logo I love so. the logo by the way it's, yeah, it's really nice yeah, so all the flyers we need the flyers. flyers we need flyers I'm yep. like I no. guess I'll make it. Yeah. You guys do great stuff. Like <clears throat> the branding, everything you guys do and just the message as well is awesome. And Thank that's you. how it should be. And like, that's like, I look forward to coming out to y'all's events because as you were saying, man, like I don't know about a lot of stuff. So going to these events helped me learn yes. and say, if I have guys like you guys on or artists or musicians or all that stuff on here, it makes it easier for me to be able to talk to them yes. and ask a little bit more of a specific question on something maybe I don't understand or something I think that the audience would like to learn about. And rather than just so, how do you make music? <laughs> like, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Right, I want exactly. to ask a more like more in depth question, yeah. something that's a little bit more interesting, not the same question over and over again. So like going to those kinds of events help me grow doing my thing and also make me like find new people who I think would be good guests on yes. here as well. So no, it's it's awesome what you guys are doing. Expert by association. Exactly. You know, I, I gain uh, information through osmosis being or being <laughs> in it kind of thing. There you go. So I do got one final question for you guys and I want to go down the line with each of y'all, whoever wants to start, that's fine. Okay. So I ask this to every time to some or people who are on the podcast for the first first time and it is do you feel successful and if you do or do not in what ways whoever would like to go first um i think i do feel successful i think success is such a uh nuanced uh, term and i think success doesn't necessarily have um the term doesn't have an end so i think that when, when people ask that question like i i for sure i know there's a lot more things that i have to do in this life right um but do I feel like I'm successful? Yes, I feel that I'm successful because, you know, I'm able to constantly cultivate good relationships with people around me. I'm able to breathe light into mm-hmm. people. I have a, a wife that loves me. I have a son that loves me. I have friends that love me. I have family that love me. Um, and when it comes to the craft that I do and the things that I that I, that I I call my bag, I'm able to smile as I get up every day and do Thanks. them. Um, you know, um, although it's not all the way how I want it to be, but... When it comes to the work that I'm doing, I know I'm doing God's work it's because yeah. um, it, it is purposeful. Everything that I put my hands on, I feel that is, is it, it, I'm able. To, I'm just kind of living in my anointment. So, yeah, yeah, I feel successful. I am successful. Um, me and my best friend Kira Alexander, um, we joke all the time about how we literally can't lose. We can't, even if we try, we literally can't lose. And that is the attitude that we carry every day. We can't lose. We will have to literally like lay down and do nothing. But we joke about it because one of us is going to come and pick us up and say, mm-hmm. hey, get up. You're mm-hmm. not, you're not stopping today. What mm-hmm. are you doing? So it's like taking on that, that, that mindset, that mindset yep. of like, I can't lose. So mm-hmm. I will always be successful. I love that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I, I, I feel like success for me is subjective. Um, I am successful. Um, I feel more successful now than I've ever felt in my life. Um, That's real. And I, I contribute that to just being consistent um, and purposeful, right? Because um, fi- cause like success for me isn't like is it is it is it linear? Um, it's it's really in the in what Dom and Khalil were saying. Like if I'm able to help somebody else, if I'm able to like bring other people up or help elevate people around me. Like if I'm the only one that's elevating, that's not successful to me. I agree. Like it's really if I'm elevating and then I'm able to push that energy outward and elevate people around me, that's true success for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I want to achieve a certain level of like immortality in my life where it's something that I put out into the world outlives me. Yep. So like if I were to die tomorrow, I know that I've done enough work to have something that outlasts me. And so that I feel like that's the ultimate goal for me. Mm-hmm. Right, but um, when I say I've been, I feel like I'm more successful now than I've ever been in my life. Is because I feel like everything in my life leading up to this point has been training and sparring for this moment. Right, like all the touring I did as a as a kid with music. Um, I used to do events in Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to be on big stages, like opening up for Carrots One, Earl Sweatshirt, Saba. What? Yeah, that's Bruno, fire. Bruno Mars. Cap six. Like, you that's know, fire. And um, all of those experiences, the ups and the downs, um, you know, it made me an entrepreneur. It made me see things from different sides. And I was able to basically, like, fine-tune and hone those skills and prepare myself for basically wind down. Like, yep. I, for me, I feel like this is my my, my life's work. Mm-hmm. And, like, just seeing it grow to this level, that that makes me feel successful. Yeah. Like, I think, I think, I think I, I feel so much like joy and pride, like this last wind down, man, just yeah, man. throughout the whole one, like just breaking out, breaking down everything. I was happy to just do it all. Like just, you know, I was tired. We were all dead tired. We were Ooh. so tired. We I were t- on a I high. Kale- we still on a high though. Still, I see Kalia and Darcy to look in their eyes. Like they're, they're tired. They're like, hey, hey, you good? Like how good? You know, I'm we tired. just like, hey, why yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but I think it's just it's just the joy um, of having something that we can call ours. Mm-hmm. You know, just just unif- we unify in this thing of ours. As Kevin yeah. would say, you know, and um, it it really is um a labor of love, man. And um, because we're doing it like that, that's that's that true success for me. And we're actually starting to see the the fruits of our labor. So. All right, I got me fired up. I love that shit. Yeah. That's right. I run through a wall right now on that. Yeah. Yeah, I say, let's fucking go. No, no, I agree with you guys. And it's like you brought up the whole fact of like things have led to where you guys are today. Yeah. I, I forget the saying, but it's like painting. You know, you're doing one layer of paint at a time until you get to that point where it's at where you want it to be. And, you know, you guys prepared for this. You know, you guys didn't know this was something you were going to be preparing for. Yeah. But, but my it, entire life was has been leading up to this moment for me. No, I agree. And you guys are leaving something here. You know, this could be something y'all, y'all's kids could take over yeah. or you know whenever you have a kid oh my man i say your kids can take over and everything <laughs> exactly i know ari and naomi gonna be a part of wind <laughs> down the future wind down yeah you know I mean? yeah but no that's the main thing you guys are bringing people up you guys aren't looking for anything else but to help raise and grow your community and that's a huge thing like my main thing like i say with the podcast as well as like it's like say like if i die tomorrow my main thing is if, if we had kids by this time or anything like that, they could hear what their dad was talking about at 21, 22 mm-hmm. years old, the struggles, the ups, the ups and downs, and kind of like what I was thinking about. And I feel like you guys are leaving something here as well that mm-hmm. could help show the way. And you're showing a good message. That's the main thing. That's why, like, whenever we were talking about doing the interview, I was super excited because you guys are doing something positive. You know, I, I have people hit me up, and I go on their Instagram. It's them saying, fuck people, like, a certain kind of people or all this other stuff. I'm like, man, get, like, I... Yeah, what are, what are we going to talk about, yeah, man? Right. Yeah, I mean, or like I get on there and they're just selling drugs. <laughs> like they're just yeah. selling pounds. I'm like, I'm like, hey, like no hate on the hustle. It's just like, I don't know what to talk to you about on that kind of right. thing. Yeah. But no, I love the message you guys are doing. And I'm really happy that you guys took the time to come sit down here today. And thank you guys for telling y'all's backstories and everything. I'm really excited to see the continued growth. I will make it out to an event. I promise. I'll come we out there. Yeah, I, I, I promise. Us, baby. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say, I'll promise I'll come out. I bring the wife with me and go walk around and go, go do some networking and 
and everything. I also mm-hmm. probably come out and make some videos, kind of like one of what I want to do as well as kind of like some Connor on the street, put a little microphone on your on your shirt and come out there and do some videos. Yeah, yeah. Talk, yeah. yeah. Talk, like, I'd be more than happy to come bring a table out and come say what's up there because, you. like I said, I just like being involved in the community, man. Anytime I get a chance to come walk around to shake hands and network with people, I enjoy it personally. I like Shannon will be with me. We'll be talking to a person for a second and then I'm gone because I'm out shaking hands, walking around with people. She's like, where do you go? But you guys are doing amazing stuff and I'm really excited to see everything continue to grow. Keep doing y'all's thing and like anytime you guys got an event going on, send me the flyer. I'll post it up. I have no problem helping support and doing anything you guys got going on. So just let me know what's going on and definitely let your other guys know. If they want to come on the podcast, they're more than welcome as well. Like I said, just it was a little limited on everything. One one of these days, I'll have one of those like Joe Rogan things. I'll have a full table where I can have five, six people on. But before we get out of here, please let everybody know where they can follow you guys again. Uh, If you guys have any solid dates for the next event, please let everybody know. All that good stuff. Follow everybody at Wind Down Wednesday Jacks on Instagram. You'll see all of our tags in that bio. You can reach out to all the curators. You can go ahead and submit if you're an artist, a vendor, um, or an MC. Um, you can submit in that bio as well. Stay tuned for our next event. We're gearing up for our Food and Wine Festival. Um, there, you know, there may be some some yeah. small gathering or other in July. Yeah, we might do a little pop ups. We'll see. Nothing we, crazy. We need to do, but yeah, we try, we, our we figure advisor. It out. Told us to chill, right? Just, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna we feel this advised. weekend, yeah. But we gonna do our thing, right, right. we right. so hard headed, you know. We hard headed, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, wind down. Wind down, yeah. Wednesday Jack. Okay, if y'all, y'all want to give y'all, y'all personal, give, yeah, yeah, personals yeah. if you I mean, want to, yeah. go right ahead. Like I said, my uh, personal Instagram is Wiz Kalia, um, and then follow me at More Life Wellness mm-hmm. LLC for my marriage and family therapy content, and yeah. Yeah, um, Dr. Dom 04. Uh, that's a personal page. Old Soul LLC is the brand. That's right. Make sure you guys go give them a follow. Anytime I see that they got an event coming up, just check on the stories. I'll make sure I put that up there with everybody. And as I said, guys, thank you so much again for your time today. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. It was really cool to sit down and get to learn more about y'all's story. And you guys will see me out there at events. You'll see my tall ass walking around. I'll, I'll be out <laughs> Can't there. Miss them. No, exactly. I mean, I usually stick out when I'm walking around out there. Um, but before I let everybody go, make sure you guys go give them a follow on all the social medias. Everything will be put in the description of the video. So you guys will be able to click and go straight to their pages. Wind down Wednesday, all their personal pages, all the normal stuff. But before I let you go as well, make sure you guys give us what's up, my man. Follow me at that's Robbie. Follow him at that's Robbie. Give well, him a follow. Robbie. I'll change it to Florida Robbie. Florida, Florida Robbie. Robbie. That's it. Give oh, him a follow man. as well. <laughs> <laughs> the calls. I, mean, the Florida I, Robbie. I love it. Florida I like Robbie. I love it. I love it. Oh God. <laughs> Get this man out. <laughs> you guys are awesome. So make sure you give him a follow. All the good stuff. Make sure you guys give us a follow. If you guys are watching our YouTube video, press that fucking subscribe button, please. You uh, 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 say, press, press that button. What you know, you we we be working hard on these videos nowadays. So stupid. make sure you guys give us a follow. To at who are you pod from everything from Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, all the normal spots, including the YouTube as well. Also, if you guys know someone who has a story that needs to be told, a business owner, entrepreneur, event thrower, anything, and you feel like they'd be a good fit for the show, you can hit me up on the social media or my email. I'm the one who personally sets up all of our interviews and everything, so you'll be talking to the real person. I don't have a publicist or anything. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> so make sure you guys give us a message on there. And as I say every single week, y'all, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you guys next week. <laughs> See you. Wind up.